disturbing. Hey friends, I'm Jimmy Gaddis. Welcome to Nostalgic. The holidays and busiest shopping days of the year are upon us. I know, time flies, especially the older we get. For me, Black Friday immediately sparks images of Tickle Me Elmo. Watch out, there's something funny going on. It's new Tickle Me Elmo. Your child tickles Elmo and he talks. That tickles. From the stampedes in stores to the overwhelming media attention, this was the toy of the 1996 holiday shopping season. Well, it's this year's Toy Story, a red furry doll that giggles a lot. Tickle Me Elmo is the hottest thing this Christmas. Sold out of stores everywhere. In this video, we'll look back at the shopping frenzy, the talk show host who set the wheels in motion, how much they were selling for, and which marketing tactic was used to sell these toys that's been copied and utilized to this day. But first, do me a favor and click that subscribe button for more content that'll make you feel nostalgic for the 80s and the 90s. Be the first to know as soon as it comes out. And uh, speaking of the 80s, yeah, nothing may ever top the Cabbage Patch Mania of 1983. <laughs> I was just four at the time, and from what I recall, not exactly into them. Although one does currently grace the retro attic here in Anchorage. Instead, it's the mid-90s that stick out to me when we talk about toys that we just had to have for Christmas. Beanie Babies, Furbies, Nintendo 64, Tamagotchis, and none more coveted than Tickle Me Elmo. That said, Time Warp, take us back to 1996. Here's Tickle Me Elmo is released in July of that year, but it could have been a monkey or a devil of sorts. Let me back up. Chicago toy inventor Ron Dubrin was inspired to create a toy you could tickle after sitting at a park and saw a bunch of kids tickling each other and having a good time. So he teamed up with fellow toy maker Greg Heyman to create a monkey named Tickles. Tickles the monkey, or Tickles the chimp as it's also been referred to, laughed and squirmed when tickled and was pitched to Tyco Toys. At the time, Tyco had a license to make toys based on Looney Tunes characters. So they said, hey, we like it, but uh, you know what? Make us a Tickle Me Taz based on the Tasmanian Devil. Some time passed though and Tycho's Looney Tunes license lapsed. Overlapping that lapse, however, they did acquire the rights to make toys based on Sesame Street characters. And the one they thought kids would have the most fun tickling was Elmo. Factories in China started pumping out these red furry dolls, which hit store shelves in July of 1996 for about $27.99 each. It was a successful launch and Tickle Me Elmo began to grow in popularity. Now, while this wasn't the first toy that laughed, it was the first toy whose reactions would progress the more you tickled it. Press Elmo's stomach, he giggled. <laughs> Do it again, he speaks. That tickled. Tickle him a third time. And hold on, because his whole body shakes with laughter. Something like this had never been done before. Plus, Tycho implemented something to entice buyers even more. They let them experience the magic of Tickle Me Elmo in the stores. They added that try me option. <laughs> that tickles. <laughs> yeah, so you can try before you buy. We've all seen it in stores, even up to this day. What could be more enticing to a kid than being able to actually use it and have a good time in the store? At that point, you're bugging mom and dad to get it. Fast forward a few months, and this is when the seeds of Tickle Me Elmo mania were sowed. Hey, it's Elmo from Sesame Street, and this is... as Rosie O'Donnell, host of the very popular Rosie O'Donnell show at the time, plugged the toy in October. Tycho sent Rosie 200 Elmos, which were given out to the audience. The rest, as they say, is history, as Tickle Me Elmo became the must-have toy of the holiday season. No wonder he's laughing. All the way to the bank, because North America has been gripped by Tickle Me Elmo hysteria. People went absolutely crazy for these things. For the most part, supply was able to keep up with demand until the day after Thanksgiving that we've all come to know and love as Black Friday, eventually selling out that day. But don't be deceived by that laughter. There might be some tears in there too, because for all the money the manufacturers have made, they could have made millions more if they hadn't underestimated demand. The frenzy to find Elmo was now on. It was on like Donkey Kong. Oh my goodness. What? Is that Elmo? Whether it was to make a kid's dream come true or make a few bucks reselling them for upwards of $1,500 a pop. Stampedes and fights broke out. Two women were arrested in Chicago for coming to blows over the toy. In New York City, people ran after delivery trucks, hoping to get their hands on one before they actually even made it into the store. In Canada, a Walmart employee was trampled by a crowd 
sending him to the hospital. Somebody in the crowd yelled, there's the Elmos, and they rushed us. His store had 48 dolls for sale that morning. 300 people lined up to vie for them. The assistant manager telling the Associated Press that he hadn't seen such a toy craze since the days of, you guessed it, the Cabbage Patch Kids. The scalper stories are what really send it over the top for me, though. Some serious back alley in the shadows type of stuff. No joke. Just listen to this account written up on December 21st in the Washington Post. I'm going to read the beginning uh, word for word. People who meet him in darkened parking lots after work always want to touch his Tickle Me Elmo. But William is firm. He tells them, you look. I hold, I'll let it giggle, then I'll put it back in the bag. You pay, then you get the bag. When he makes his deals to sell one of the coveted Sesame Street monster dolls at 15 times its retail price or more, William always takes along at least two friends for protection. These people are crazy, explained the Cumberland, Maryland man who bought Elmo's when you still could and has been selling them to pay overdue bills. You figure if they want it that bad, they could shoot you for it. Well, damn. The same article goes on to mention John Gotti Jr., son of reputed mob boss John Gotti. Uh, he was photographed leaving a Toys R Us in Queens uh, with an armful of Tickle Me Elmos. This is the part I love. According to store officials, uh, there was nothing shady going on. This was all on the up and up and had nothing to do with the $100 tips the Daily News reported seeing him giving store clerks. Had nothing to do with it. But of course, what sticks out the most for most people uh, were those first-hand shopping experiences. They can get a little dangerous, as you saw. According to the Strong Museum of Play, which, by the way, has not elected Tickle Me Elmo into its National Toy Hall of Fame yet, to help fend off fights and possible theft, Toys R Us had a system alerting its rain check holders, at least. Uh, they would give you a call and leave a vague message that your item was ready for pickup. When you arrived, the clerk would hand you a pre-wrapped package so you could slip out of the store without anyone knowing what you had in the box. Eventually, many of us would get tired of hearing about Tickle Me Elmo. Some would use it as an opportunity for attention, and thankfully, some would use it as an opportunity to give back, or both. Finally tonight, we bring you some good news and some bad news concerning that little red monster that you love to tickle. Yes, we are talking about Elmo. In similar stunts on opposite sides of the country, the Tickle Me Elmo doll faced life or the wood chipper. We take you first to Santa Barbara. Radio station KHTY DJ Hal Abrams held the Sesame Street character hostage while crowds gathered around chanting shred him. But the station was flooded with faxes and phone calls to save Elmo. And in the end, Santa came to the rescue and Elmo was spared. The doll was donated to the pediatrics ward of Cottage Hospital. Oh. Elmo has about three feet to go. He's centered exactly. He's got one foot away from certain In Southfield, death. Michigan, where Elmo was facing a similar fate, he didn't fare so well. DJs there figured the best way for everybody to get an Elmo for the holidays was to divvy him up, so they put him through the shredder. Then they collected the pieces in a small coffin and passed them out to the crowd. You know, a lot of people out there who are dying to get one of those dolls are cringing watching that, saying, I could have given that, you know. In the end, Tyga reportedly sold over a million Tickle Me Elmos by Christmas of that year and more than five million by Christmas of 1997. What do you remember from that year? Did you want one? Did you get one? Do you recall venturing out to find one in the wild? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this Black Friday flashback, please give this video a like and be sure to subscribe for more videos that are going to make you feel nostalgic for the 80s, like this one right here and the 90s like this one right here. I'm Jimmy Gaddis. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.